Since the beginning of time, art has, in some way or another, reflected the culture it was born out of, and cinema is no different. It is arguable that no two events have shaped cinema more than the First and Second World Wars. In this quick documentary, we will be looking at how art was born out of two of the darkest periods in human history, and how this impact continues to influence the medium today. When the First World War exploded into action in 1914, cinema was still a relatively new art form, and as such, suffered some major setbacks. Early film pioneers, such as Georges Méliès and Edwin S. Porter, were forced to fade away into obscurity, and as the Central Powers encroached on Europe, many film studios were either destroyed or abandoned, leading cinema into its darkest period thus far. The war's end in 1918 brought a resurgence of cinema in both the Allied and Central Powers. Cinema of the Allied Powers had come back in full force, in particular American cinema, which, after the advent of the first talkie in 1927, had entered its golden age of Hollywood cinema. Classic Hollywood cinema typically featured films in the adventure and romance genres, and these films almost always feature a happy ending, which reflected the spirits of America at the time, after their victory in the First World War and their entrance into the Roaring Twenties. The cinema of Germany, however, was of a much different tone. German Expressionist cinema arose after the war, and unlike classic Hollywood cinema, featured films in the horror and surrealist genres. The First World War had left Germany so battered and despaired that it gave way to a new type of cinema, German Expressionist cinema. German Expressionism's main themes were much darker than its American counterparts, and usually focused on dreams, madness, and betrayal which reflected the desolated German spirits of the time. Films such as The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, Nosferatu, Phantom, and Metropolis are all prime examples of German Expressionist cinema. These two types of cinema changed the entire film landscape with the golden age of Hollywood cinema influencing the likes of The Artist, La La Land, and Moulin Rouge, while German Expressionism had a heavy influence on Billy Wilder and Alfred Hitchcock, who in turn single-handedly influenced pretty much every horror and thriller film ever after him. But the First World War was not the only event that shook the landscape of cinema. After the start of the Second World War, Creative cinema in Nazi-controlled Europe was abandoned in favor of propaganda films. But it was after the war when European cinema returned in full force. Italian, Japanese, and French cinema were born out of the unstable post-war climate that, due to the lack of censorship restrictions, allowed filmmakers a large amount of creative freedom. Italian neorealism was a movement grounded in the reality of life as a working class Italian after the war. De Sica's Bicycle Thieves is a great example of this post-war cinema. In Japan, the golden age of Japanese cinema gave birth to legendary directors Masaki Kobayashi and Akira Kurosawa, who went on to influence new Hollywood cinema pioneers such as Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, and George Lucas. Jean-Luc Godard and Francois Truffaut were both products of the French New Wave cinema, which focused on changing the rules of a traditional narrative structure. This movement then went on to influence Sofia Coppola, Quentin Tarantino, and Alejandro González Iñárritu. All of these movements, both American and international, have had an enormous impact on cinema as we know it today. And although the horrors of war are undisputed, all of these movements have owed themselves in part to these two periods of darkness and destruction. I'm going to leave you with the words of revered Russian director Andrei Tarkovsky, who I think explained this idea best.